Here, I've sketched out a basic velocity time plot, showing the motion of some particle moving on the x-axis, and we want to analyze various characteristics of the particle's motion. Now, despite how minimal this graph may seem, it's just uh, the t-axis, uh, the velocity axis, and the velocity of the particle, despite, despite the, the minimal amount of details here, we can actually learn quite a lot about the way the object is moving, even from this information alone. First of all, we can look at the initial and final directions of the particle's travel. Since the velocity of the particle starts out all the way down here, below the axis, then the velocity starts out uh, negative. And if the, particle, if the graph represents the particle's motion on an x-axis, then a negative velocity must mean that the particle is traveling in the negative x direction. So the initial direction of travel is negative. Similarly, we can use this same general idea to think about the final direction of travel. Uh, the velocity is above the, uh, the axis at the, time of mo at the end of the motion, so the final direction is positive. If that seems odd to you, then try to visualize what's happening here. The particle starts out traveling negative, or, or if it makes it easier, imagine it traveling to the left, for example. If we define the negative x-axis to be left, and the positive x-axis to be right, which is often how it's drawn. You often draw the positive x-axis as if it's going to the right, and the negative x-axis is typically shown to the left. If the particle starts out traveling to the left, then the velocity slowly approaching the time axis like this means that the particle's velocity is becoming less negative or is decreasing in magnitude, meaning that it's losing speed until it reaches the axis, at which point its velocity is zero for a moment before its speed starts picking up again in the positive x direction. In order for this change in directions of travel to take place, we can see now that the particle will have to momentarily stop moving when it reaches the, uh, the axis, where the velocity is equal to zero, and therefore the speed is going to be equal to zero there as well. We can determine the sign of the acceleration as well. Since the velocity starts out negative and eventually becomes positive, as discussed earlier, we know that the acceleration must be positive, as acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So if the velocity is increasing, then the acceleration must be positive. Lastly, we want to think about whether the acceleration is constant or if the acceleration varies with time. Now, as I just mentioned, the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Or, more specifically, the acceleration is equal to the time derivative of velocity. meaning that the graph of the acceleration will always represent the slope of the velocity graph. If the acceleration is in fact constant, then the slope of the velocity graph will always be equal, and the velocity graph will look like a straight line, which appears to be what we have here. Now, you would be wise to realize that it's technically impossible to prove with 100% certainty that this is a perfectly straight line without any further information. For all we know, there could be the tiniest bit of curvature that's impossible to notice with our eyes alone. But when the graph does look very straight, then it's not an unreasonable assumption or simplification to make. So with a fair amount of confidence, we can call the particle's acceleration here constant.